Chandley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. I want to talk to you today about stress, anxiety, and your brain, or how to profit from stress. Let me give you a description of this teaching. In this podcast teaching, we will discuss the current sociological threat of stress, the influence of anxiety, its harmful effects, and how to use it for our benefit, and how to protect ourselves from panic so that we can improve our brain function, plus how to be healed. Does this sound impossible? Hang on for the ride, my friend, and watch things improve in your life. So let's talk about stress, anxiety, and your brain, how to profit from stress. In my 2018 teaching titled, Anointed Slowdown, Preparation for Your Future, I told people to slow down now, get involved helping others, do not overload yourself with schedule, cut out in your mind's eye what you want to do in the future, and write down your Holy Spirit goals and claim Mark chapter 11 verse 24 regularly. I told people, slow down now. I warned them the reason you need to slow down now is because stressful times are coming. You will need all the preparation you can get to maintain spiritual equilibrium. And by the way, if you have not done so, study my teachings as follows. Dealing with stress in the end times, frustration and your future, the way out, and thirdly, healing from stress. I placed a link for those in the show notes of the podcast. My definition of balance, the micro one, is to maintain a peace zone out of which you refuse to wander. That is, stay in Area 14 where you refuse to be bothered by Satan, by demons, by people, even by Christians. As a graduate industrial engineer, I was required to study in no such subject matter as strength of materials, dynamics, quantitative and qualitative analysis, and in addition, upper level physics and electrochemistry. I find it interesting that the physical or physics definition of stress is twofold and more correctly applicable to the human genome. Firstly, an applied external force or system of forces that tends to strain or deform a body. Secondly, the internal resistance of a body to such an applied force or system of forces. Therefore, as pertains to the human condition, we could accurately say that stress, either from external or internal forces, is a mentally, physically, or emotionally disruptive and upsetting condition occurring in response to adverse external or internal influences and capable of affecting physical health, usually characterized by increased heart rate, a rise in blood pressure, muscular tension, irritability, and or depression. Now, since we are a tripartite being, that is body, mind, and spirit, we can reasonably assume that stress can affect us physically, mentally, and spiritually, and that since all three are interconnected, either one may also influence the others. The synergistic effect of which could produce total wreck or breakdown. This is why some people who come to me for help seem to at first be manifesting total meltdown. Now let's discuss the bad news. One psychologist reports that the average high school kid today has the same level of anxiety as the average psychiatric patient in the early 1950s. Here's some important facts you should know. Anxiety-related issues are number one health issue in the USA and the number two issue for men after alcohol. Also, over $48 billion is spent yearly in the USA on stress. And if we include loss of productivity due to stress, It's over 300 billion. And check this out. 95% of teenagers have a friend who is dealing with stress. USA is the number one nation in the world dealing with stress. Now let's discuss the good news. Stress is essential to brain health. 
Michael Benheim, a medical doctor, states that neuroscientists have discovered that in order to learn, we need a certain amount of short-term tolerable stress to stay sharp and to grow our brains. Moderate occasional stress promotes new cell generation. Enjoyable forms of self-induced stress, like physical exercise, can help our brains by improving short-term memory. Also, our overall health benefits from moderate stress by helping our immune system stay on guard to protect against infectious microorganisms and cancer. Now, let me give you four key curatives to stress and also anxiety-related conditions. Number one, stop the activities that seem to be causing you stress. If you cannot stop them completely, then force yourself to take pre-scheduled breaks for rest or recreation. A non-scheduled break could be as soon as you feel the outset of anxiety or stress. Number two, do something you enjoy. Find a new hobby or recreation. Or do something you've always wanted to do. Ride a motorcycle, fly an airplane, build something, learn to dance. Number three, Speak affirmations to yourself. Write them on paper or record them and play them back. The importance is to say them to yourself. Our speech mechanism is vitally associated with our central nervous system. You can bring healing and strength to your whole system, especially if you are saying the Word of God. Find scriptures that pertain to your situation and your new goals or goals or desires that you want to accomplish. One great resource available to you is my book, Total Person Toolbox, Words That Work. And I placed a link for that book in the show notes of the podcast. Number four, pray in tongues, the language of the Holy Spirit. Firstly, when you pray in tongues, you're praying according to the will of God, even if you do not understand it. Let me quote to you from the Brit Hadashah in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. It says, He who, when speaking, uses the gift of tongues, is speaking not to men, but to God. For no one understands him, yet in the Spirit he is speaking hidden truths. Secondly, also when you even just sigh or groan in tongues, you are allowing the Holy Spirit to intercede for you according to the will of God, and thereby bring you therapeutic help. Again, in the Brit Hadashah, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, we read this. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart, that's God, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then a third reason why you should pray in tongues the language of the Spirit. One of the great advantages when you praise God in tongues is that you're engaged in pure worship. There are not enough words in your native language, in Hebrew, English, Spanish, French, to tell God how wonderful he is and how much you love him. However, when you praise him in tongues, The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, is praising the Lord through you, and God comes on the scene with healing power. The Bible tells us that God lives in the praises of his people. In Psalm 22, verse 3, we read, But you are holy, you who inhabit the praises of Israel. Now, if you would like to know more about how to receive God's power with gifts of the Spirit, Study my book titled, How to Receive God's Power with Gifts of the Spirit. And I also placed a link for that book in the show notes of the podcast. My friend, learn to listen to your body. Also, learn to make stress work for you. Monitor the daily or weekly events that cause stress and anxiety. Pray and ask God to help you recognize chronic stress levels that are unhealthy. These can affect memory and judgment resulting from impaired nerve cell growth and their cable-like connections. Also, too much high chronic stress affects the executive center, the prefrontal cortex of frontal lobes of the brain causing bad decisions. Other problems that can result from skewed brain instructions are increased risk of heart attacks, high blood pressure, 
cancer, and intestinal problems like IBS and ulcers. A five-year study showed that those who had high stress proneness had twice the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Listen to your body, my friend. Frequent stomach sensations, tension headaches, muscle tension and soreness, especially in the neck and shoulders, and chronic fatigue can all be signs in addition to fear. Do not accommodate fear. Now, what about fear? Another sign upon the road is fear. The basic stress response is fight or flight, and it is genetic. However, chronic stress can damage memory formation and weaken the immune system. Love is stronger than fear. The Bible says love casts out fear. The next time fear knocks at the door of your heart, let faith answer it. Remember, the Bible says to people who are followers of Mashiach, of the Messiah, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You can read that in the New Testament in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Fear is a spirit. And God says if you follow the Mashiach, if you know the Messiah, you've received a spirit not of fear. So my friends, resist fear. Just speak to it and say, I won't take you. I refuse you. God says that I've received not a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Remember this saying, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, and no one was there. And here's a physiological truth. If you allow fear to linger, it rewires your brain and bypasses the prefrontal cortex. Proverbs 27 verse 12 tells us, A prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. You know, I've done lots of investing through the years by day trading and investing in commodities and futures where I operated with large margins for the advantage of leverage. Of course, if the trades went south, why, the margins worked to my disadvantage. But here, I want to illustrate the good use of margins. The definition of margin is an amount available beyond what is actually needed. One source describes it as the space between our current load and our limits. Let me talk to you about when you do not have margin. Number one, stress goes up. Number two, focus narrows. Number three, relationships suffer. And number four, you're not prepared for the future. By the way, concerning relationships, relationships only start or are nourished during margin. In Luke chapter 17, 1, in the Brit Hadashah, Messiah Yeshua taught, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. And my friends, this is where margin can be a buffer to protect you from stress. So, how do you develop margin? Number one, slow down. Number two, simplify things in your life. Activities, stuff, technology. Number three, allow for and establish time, money, work, and relationship margins. Let me repeat that a little differently. Allow for and establish margins in time, in money, in work, and in relationships. And then number four, give yourself space. Don't make things too binding, too tight, too limited. Plan for margin in your time, in your financial dealings, in your work, and in your relationships. And finally, my friend, here's the really great news. There is a physician whose name is Jehovah Rapha. The name in Hebrew means the Lord who heals. He can heal your stress, your body, your soul, and your spirit. All you have to do is ask him. Just pray this prayer. Messiah of God and of Israel, I need healing. Please forgive my sins. I turn away from them and I turn to you. Please come into my life and take over now. Save and heal me. Give me eternal life and help me to live for you here on earth and take me to heaven when I die. My friend, I trust that the power, the healing, the health, the blessing, and the prosperity of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob overtakes you. 
This has been your friend, Prince Hanley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Bashim Adonai.